Hello everybody, this is week 5 tutorial 4 and we have 4 tutorial questions today and we will go through them one by one Question 1, they were lost and demand elasticity The government is considering levying a tax of $120 per unit on either leather jackets or mobile phones Supply curve for each of these goods is identical, so supply is the same. And this orange, orange line here. Demand for leather jacket is shown with D1. Demand for mobile phone is D2. And clearly, uh, the difference between D1 and D2 is D1 is flatter, D2 is steeper. Or in other words, D1 is more elastic, D2 is less elastic. Okay, imagine the government were to tax leather jacket. The following graph shows the supply and demand for the goods. Uh, the graph also shows a wedge representing the tax. So tax driving drives a wedge between demand and the supply from the uh, left, left side of the equilibrium. So use the triangle, the tend triangle, dash the symbol to share the area that represents that they were lost associated with the tax. So we know that after tax, after this tax, it created a triangle of this that was okay. Imagine the government were to tax mobile phones. The following graph shows the supply and demand for these goods, as well as the tax wage of $120 per unit. Uh, again, use the triangle to shade the area that represents dead weight loss associated with the tax. So again, it's here, dead weight loss after tax. A tax on leather jacket has a dead weight loss of... So you got to calculate the area of this triangle. Uh, so here, so you, you need to calculate the area of this triangle, you need to, to know this length and the height here. Okay, so the, the length of this side is 40, difference is 40 and 160, so the length is 120. And from here to here, this, this vertical distance is uh, 140. And 100, so it's 40. So the area is one half multiplied by 120 multiplied by 20. So it's 2400. 2400. They will also 20. Oops. I'm not getting correct. 160. Oh, okay. So, so this tells us area is fifteen hundred. We already told. So, if you move your mouse to this area, the calculator says it's fifteen hundred. Similarly, move your uh, mouse to this area. It's six thousand. So a tax on mobile phones has a debt weight loss of six thousand dollars. Therefore, if, if the government want, wants to minimize debt weight loss, it should tax tax this mobile phone rather than tax a leather jacket because mobile phone is less elastic less elastic okay so let's because tax on goods with relatively more elastic demand generates larger debt weight lost and this demand for for the leather jacket is quite elastic it's quite flat
Okay, let's move on. Question two. Definition of economic costs. Jim lives in Brisbane and runs a business that sells pianos. And in average year, he receives $950,000 from sales of pianos. For this sale, he must pay the manufacturer a wholesale cost of $500,000. He also pays wages and utility bills, totaling $150,000. If he does not quit his, this piano business, he can work in an accounting firm and receive an annual salary of $55,000. He owns his showrooms. If he chooses to rent it out, he will receive $30,000 in rent per year. Assume that the value of this showroom does not depreciate du during the year. No other costs are incurred in running this piano business. So, so in running the business, there are, if, you, if you think in terms of whether, whether a cost involves um, a dollar flowing out of your pocket or not, then we can classify this cost into explicit and uh, implicit. Right? Explicit costs, uh, these items involve a uh, dollar flowing out of your pocket, so you won't forget about it. Uh, implicit cost, which does not involve a uh, dollar uh, explicitly flowing out of your pocket. And uh, we use opportunity cost of, of these items. Okay, question one, what are Jim's implicit cost of selling pianos? So first, first one, he, Jim himself work at the piano shop. Uh, to do so, he has to give up working in the accounting firms. So that's the opportunity cost of working in the piano shops. So the wages, Jim pays, Jim pays his, oh sorry, no. The wages that Jim pays his employees, now this is, this is explicit because there's a dollar flowing out of Jim's pocket. The rental income Jim could receive if he chose rent rent out his showrooms. So again, this is implicit. Uh, in order to use these showrooms and his piano business, he has to give up the option of renting it out. So the opportunity cost of this is uh, the rent that he will receive, which is thirty thousand dollar. The salary Jim could earn if he worked in an accounting firm. Again, he has to give up this if he works in his piano business. The wholesale cost for the pianos that Jim pays the manufacturer. This is uh, explicit, this item is explicit cost because there's uh, dollar value, there's money flowing out of Jim's pocket. What is the accounting profit of Jim's piano business? So accounting profit uh, is the total revenue take away accounting cost. Accounting cost does not cover the implicit costs. So the accounting profit would be equal to uh, total revenue, so which is which is nine hundred fifty thousand dollar. Take away accounting cost, which is the explicit cost, uh, wholesale cost of five hundred thousand minus salary payment, which is one hundred fifty. So we get three hundred thousand. So that's um, accounting profit. Total, total economic profit. What is the, the economic profit of Jim's piano business? So we gotta follow take away the implicit costs, the opportunity cost of, which is uh, fifty-five thousand minus. Uh, $30,000. So the economic profit is 215000 Taking into account Jim's implicit cost of do doing business as well as his explicit costs, if Jim's only goal is to earn as much economic profit as possible, definitely he should continue to, to stay in his piano business because this business brings in Two hundred fifty thousand dollar, which is positive economic profit.
So let's um, question two, question three. Inputs and outputs. So we re relate inputs and outputs using production function. And in, in production function, there's important concept here, marginal product of labor. Jenny's perf performance pizza is a small restaurant in Brisbane that sells gluten-free pizzas. Jenny's very tiny kitchen barely has enough room for the two ovens in which her workers bake the pizzas. So this, capital equi this equipment is a capital. Two ovens is fixed in the short run. Jenny's uh, signed a lease obligating her to pay the rent for the two ovens for the next year. Because of this, and because Jenny's kitchen cannot fit more than two ovens, Jenny's cannot change the number of ovens she uses in the production of pizza in the short run. However, Jenny's decision regarding how many workers to use can vary from week to week. So she can decide how many workers she wants to hire. Because her workers tend to be students, each Monday, Janice let them know how many workers she needs for each day of the week. In the short run, these workers are variable because uh, depending on how many pizza Jenny wants to produce, she can decide how many workers to use. In contrast, oven is fixed. Ovens are fixed inputs. No matter how many pizzas uh, Jenny want to produce, she can only use uh, two ovens in the short run. Jenny's production schedule is presented in the following table. Fill in the blanks to complete the marginal product of labor for each worker. So high zero workers produce zero pizzas. High one workers produce 50 pizzas. So the first worker, the the increase in if Janice had the first workers, the output increased from zero to fifty. So marginal product of these workers is fifty. Change of up quantity over change of workers. Fifty divided by one you get fifty. Um, for the second workers, output increase from fifty to to ninety. So the change of quantity is forty minus change of labor which is 1. So 40 divided by 1 equals 40. Similarly for third one is 30. Third worker, uh, fourth worker 20, uh, fifth worker 10. On the following graph plus Janice production function using the orange point. Okay so we want to plot the production function. The first point will be zero high at zero workers produce nothing. Higher one workers produce 50. Two workers produce 90. Three workers 120. Four workers 140. Five workers 150. And we see, you should, we see that this production function, the slope of this production becomes brighter and brighter. And this is the slope uh, tells information about marginal product labor, and the marginal product labor is the equation. Law of, mar law of diminishing returns. Okay, assume that labor is Janice's only variable in costs. If she has a fixed cost of $100 per day and pays each of her workers $60 uh, per, per day, use the orange points. Uh, to plot Janice's total cost curve on the following graph using the quantity from the pre preceding table. Be sure to plot from left to right. Okay, so um, if Janice produces 50 uh, units, 50 pizzas, she, she, she will hire one worker. One worker and she she's going to pay this workers $60 and plus a $100 uh, fixed cost so total cost would be 160 so 50 oh hang on if produce nothing if Jenny produce no piece at all she still need to pay $100 so it's 100 $100 
If produce 50 pizzas, she's going to hire one workers. That costs her $60 or plus $100, $160. Okay, if she produce hire two workers, she can produce ninety pizzas. Two workers cost her one hundred twenty plus one hundred, so two hundred two hundred twenty. So that's ninety two hundred twenty. Okay. Uh. If she hires three workers, and she can produce 120, so it's 120 pizzas with three workers. Three workers cost her 180, 180 plus 100, so it's 280. Uh, 280. Uh, if she hires four workers, she can produce 140, 140. And four, four workers cost her 240, 240 plus 100, 340. 340. Um, if she hire five workers, she can produce 150, 150. And five workers cost her $300. $300 plus 100 is 400. So that's a cost function. The shape of production function reflects a law of diminishing margin return. That's true. So this is a question three. Let's go to question four. Cost in the short run versus cost in the long run. Uh, Bike Specs is a major manufacturer of bicycles. Currently, the company produces back in one factory. So this factory, uh, the company is using one factory to producing bags. However, it is considering expanding production to two or even three factories. The following table shows the company's short-run average cost each month for various level of productions it uses. If it uses one, two, or three factories, so, we, we, so if um, the company use one factory and want to produce 100 bikes, that cost, total average cost will be 120, and 90 if it's 200, so on so forth. Imagine X Bikes is currently producing 400 bags per month and his own factory. His short long average cost is so currently he's, he only the company only has one factory. So, in order to produce 400 bags, so we the average cost will be 135 per bag. Imagine X bags is expanding, expecting to produce 400 bags per month for several months, several years, and these cases in the long run, it would choose to produce bags using, so how many factories, so definitely it should, sh the company should choose the factories such that the average cost is the minimized, is the smallest, so in this, in, in these cases will be three factories, because the average cost will be just Ninety dollars per bag in the long run. On the following graph, plot the three uh, short run average total cost curve for X bags from the previous table, specifically using the green points to pl plot its short run average total cost if it operates one, purple points two, uh, orange points for three. Okay, so if it is so if it is one, then producing one hundred is one hundred twenty. Producing two hundred is nine ninety. 
within 300 is 90 as well 400 135 uh, 500 is 210 so that's uh, the average cost of using one factory two factory 180 is 180 uh, 500 is 180 if it is um, three factories producing 100 is 210 Between two hundred one three five. Producing three hundred ninety. Producing uh four hundred is ninety. Producing five hundred one twenty one two zero. Okay, so now in the long run, in the long run, uh, the company can choose the number of factories. So if if it, if it is to produce one hundred, clearly, clearly, the company will, will use uh, one hundred, uh, one factories rather than two or three factories. Similarly, for if produce two hundred bags. <coughs> Again, it's one factory rather than two or three. Three hundred, uh, the company is indifferent between using the number of uh, factories. Whether it's one or two or three is fine. Uh, Four hundred is three factories. Five hundred is three factories. So this is a long run um, average cost curve, which is an envelope of the short run average cost curve. So in the long run, throughout which range of output levels does X experience these economies of scales? So it's from 400 to 500, more than 400. So this is tutorial 4, uh, questions, practice questions.